Eat the Heroes on Nautical Channel. Today's a special guest, uh, Jess Graham Hansen, class of 1971, born in Aarhus, Denmark, and one of the most uh, talented sailors on today's pro circuit. The NC Sports Newsroom uh, recently connected with Jess for an exclusive 360-degree live chat and with plenty to cover. The early days and that Russell Cruz factor, the unforgettable America's Cup memories as a mascalzone latino, and now a great 2015 start on the Extreme Sailing Series, plus so much more. It's all right here, right now, in this uh, special edition of Top Story. NC Sports, plunge into the action. Hello, yes, and welcome to Nautical Channel Sports. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you on board. Thank you very much for, for letting, me, uh, letting me be here. Now, your sailing career began in match racing and made it all the way to the America's Cup on the monohulls. And since uh, 2011, you made the big switch to the 40-foot multi-hulls on the Extreme Sailing Series. This is one a tough circuit, and your guys uh, just uh, sealed an important second place in Act 2 in Oman. It's a new season, and already SAP Extreme appears as a serious contender for the 2015 title. What are the key factors uh, behind these early results? Monohull sailing into multi has been difficult, um, and it takes a bit of you know time to to get comfortable with the with the multi and, and understand the game. And and, and and I think you know now we're definitely more confident uh, in the SAP Extreme sailing team and. We have also in the past done a few podium places already in the second year on the, on the circuit. Last year was a difficult year for us. The competition was very tough last year. And there was 11-12 vote on the starting line, which made it, made, makes it very difficult. This year we, 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 are, um, we are eight boats, eight or nine boats on, on, the, on the line. And, um, and I think that probably suits us a little better. And um, but also we are uh, getting more and more uh, comfortable with the sailing, and, and you know uh, uh, have a very strong team uh, this year. And um, we are very determined to uh, to put in a good result this year. The Extreme Sailing Series continued to reconfirm its success as the prime sailing championship on a yearly calendar. What's the secret for getting ahead in an event with so many tight races and also so much talent on the short track? Some big names that didn't do too well last year after all. There must be a huge psychological factor at play. Uh, sure, for sure it's, it's a big factor. It's, it's four days of, of, of racing and it's a... Um, it's, um, yeah, around eight eight races a day. So it's mentally it's a, it's very tough to to um, to perform. You have to really find consistency, and that that's been one of the issues that we have been dealing with in the past. That we can say very well, but we also had some moments that were not so good. Um, but it, it it's definitely um, a, a tough uh, series to com to compete in. Also because the races are so short that you cannot really depend on on, on, on boat speed. You really have to, to pull up, pull off some, some good starts and also have some great boat handling and find the consistency uh, throughout uh, four days of racing. And, and that's, that's difficult and it's been difficult for us. And you saw last year from some of the, the, the superstars in sailing that it's, it is difficult. Thanks to Denmark's a huge uh, sailing tradition, Jess was fortunate enough to have a family that loves the sailing. So he started very small on the Optimist and then moved up to the Euro dinghy. In the early 90s, match racing became a part of the Danish training program, and two young talents, Jess Graham Hansen and Rasmus Kostner, would quickly make a name for themselves. And by 2003, they were vice world champions. Today, Jess and Rasmus are a legendary duo on the pro sailing panorama and a worthy adversary for any competitor. That Ras and me, we, we uh, joined up in the in the kind of the, the late 90s, and um, yeah, we we um, we worked our way uh, up the, the rankings on the match racing, and we we a good team because you know we we complement each other uh, in different areas. We also has become of course uh, great friends uh, over the years, and we have you know experienced uh, some good things, but also some tough times in in, in sailing. Um, 
but it has been um, it has been a great friendship and um, and, and I think a, a, a very good career for, for both of us. We both uh, joined the uh, the Mascalzone Latino team in 2005 for the for the Americas Cup and and I think that was um, a big step for us to to be part of the Americas Cup and. Um, I hope that Vincenzo is, is someday will watch the program because uh, every now and then I'm, I'm sending a, a thought to Vincenzo because he gave us a great opportunities and I think that some of the, the stuff we're doing today, we wouldn't have been able to do that if uh, Vincenzo had not been inviting us to, to join the Mascarpetone Latino team. We'll definitely make sure that Vincenzo gets this message. You must still carry fond memories of Valencia 2007, when, by the way, you did very well, with a fifth place overall in the Louis Vuitton Cup among the 11 challengers of America's Cup 32, and the title of Best Starting Helmsman. To come into the Mascalzone Latino uh, was um, was a great experience for us and me. Uh, first of all, we were, um, you know, they they, they, they greeted us very well, and um, and quite uh, shortly you just became a part of the, the, the team. Um, and um, for me personally, uh, the relationship with many of the Italian guys on the team was great. Um, they, I like the attitude that their kind of uh, lifestyle or whatever you call it was uh, suited me very well. And um, but also Vincenzo, I think was a was a great leader, and um, he is charismatic, but um, he's, I think he was fair and. Um, I think he put together a campaign. Um, looking back, there were probably things that we could have done differently. But um, but in overall, uh, um, I think it was a was a was a was a good campaign, and, and for me, it was a fantastic time. Now, while Vincenzo Norato did play a big part on launching both your pro careers, the real Kickstarter came from sailing's biggest living legend. Not just anyone gets to call the tactics for Russell Coots. Yeah, it's a it's a funny story, but uh, we did the uh, the match racing world championship uh, at Lake Garda. Um, I think maybe in 2003 or maybe 2004, and Russell was there too. And, and we uh, we did some training uh, the day before the the competition was starting. And basically, what happened after that was that Russell he um, he um, basically he said that he was uh, splitting with Alingi and. Um, you know that he was looking for a team to to uh, to sail with on the on the match racing circuit, and if um, if me and my team would would be happy to join him, that took about two seconds to say to say yes to that. It was a, a great opportunity, of course, and um, and then we did uh, I think two years with with Russell on the match racing, and also a bit bit of the TP 52s in the early days. Of course, uh, Russell and Vincenzo know each other, and and I think that Russell also played a part of getting us uh, in touch with Vincenzo and, and, and got us into the America's Cup. Like many athletes today, you also had to become entrepreneurs and managers for your own team's very survival. How are you dealing with this new experience and balancing it with the work on board? Are you happy with the status quo and the results? After we, we, we understood that the cup was, was not gonna, going to happen for us, we, we kind of uh, went out and, and uh, created our own team. And, you know, it takes a lot of hard work and it takes a bit of luck. And, um, and, um, and we were lucky to, uh, to, uh, to uh, team up with SAP and that has been a fantastic uh, partnership for us. Of course, it, it's, it's a balance between the focus on the sailing, but also make sure that the team is running and, and that focus or that balance is not always uh, super easy to get right. But I think we, we kind of uh, learn from day to day and from year to year. And now three and a half year down the road, I think we are in a, in a, in a much more comfortable position uh, now. Uh, and have learned a lot and um, are ready to take on some uh, some uh, big challenges on the water. So much has changed in sailing since AC32 in Valencia. The tech, the boats, the onboard roles, and so much more. Give us your take on these brand new frontiers in the sport. It's, it's very interesting what's happening now in, 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 the, in the sport of sailing. Personally, of course, if we go back to, to just after the Cup in Valencia, I think it was a, it was a fantastic America's Cup, the 30, 32nd America's Cup. And, um, and um, it was a disappointment that kind of 
uh, fall apart after, after that. I was for sure hoping to do another campaign with Mascalzona Latino, and um, but that that wasn't to happen. So, um, but I think now you, what we see in sailing is is, is great. Uh, you know, uh, there's a of course the America's Cup with some I think amazing boats. Uh, of course, there's not so many teams around, and, and that's a is of course um, a bit of a bummer for, 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 for some of the, the, the guys like me that is not any more involved in the America's Cup. But then, you know, there has been some other opportunities for us. The extreme training series is one of them. Um, I think there's, you know, also circuits like the GC32 or the M32, which are very interesting and very fun uh, to be part of. And now you also see the the new uh, like falling the Red Bull falling generation is coming up and and I'm looking forward to see see that uh, circuit and and see some of the young uh, people uh, with some great, great opportunities to to race on on very fast multiples. In fact, a team SAP Extreme is now also competing on the M32 catamarans, which besides the worlds also includes an intensive Scandinavian championship. What did you see in this boat and this circuit that enticed you and your partners to join in? The N32 is a great circuit and uh, the founder, uh, Håkon, is putting a lot of effort into creating a, a, a stadium uh, racing uh, circuit with the N32 catamaran. It's a lot of fun to sail the boat. It's a very light, uh, fine machine. It's it's fast and it's, it's it's tricky to sail. I think it's a it's a it's a great circuit for us to do in the Scandinavia. The competition is very strong. Uh, there's you see some of the the best Swedish sailors is already competing. Uh, Freddy Löv, uh, Matthias Ram, very very strong teams to beat. And so we definitely hope to be doing more and more at the N32. Um, for us, it's also a great uh, training platform for the extreme sailing series because there's so many similarities. From monoholes to multi-holes, then on to TV-ready stadium sailing. And now, foiling. The real great techno superstar made world famous by the last America's Cup 34 in San Francisco. The sport has indeed a change. Is it for the better, in your view? I had the opportunity last year to, to race the GC32 in, in Austria. And, um, and that was the first experience for me on, on, a, on a foiling boat. And it's uh, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot to be learned. I think that that foiling is going to stay. You see a lot of, of, of stuff going on with the mud and now the GC32. And I'm sure there'll be other other classes uh, to, to come with with, with foiling technology. Uh, so it's it's really early days. And so I'm sure that's going to be a part of the future. I don't know where the America's Cup will go. Let's see. But I, but I think that you know with the multi sailing is now so established that that even if the America's should go back to monohouse in the future. I'm pretty sure that the, the multi sailing will, will stay and I'm sure that, that falling will, will stay too. Well, thank you so much, uh, Yes, Graham Hansen, for sharing all this great insight with NC Sports viewers from all around the globe. And fair winds to the whole SAP Extreme crew for the rest of this 2015 season. Thank you very much and thanks for, for uh, calling me up. Join the current on Nautical Channel and meet the real heroes. Stay tuned for more one on one interviews and in depth profiles with our top players from the wide world of water sports. Plunge into the action with NC Sports. <laughs>